Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox kind of video for you today. Look what we've got. This huge box came in. It's like Christmas. What do you think's in it, Joe? Uh, maybe it's a video game. It might be a video game. Let's see what's in this sucker. What you think? Let's try to cut it open here. Got the razor blade running it down the side. Maybe it's that Ferrari we've been trying to get. We've been telling out. people about buying Ferraris on Amazon, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Might have to kill this cardboard, Joe. Oh, God, there's another one. Got you. There's a, there's a box in the box, people. Hold on a second. This was inside it. Cut it open a little bit. Wow. Boy, it looks pretty cool so far, Joe. One more left to go. All right, folks. Boy, that looks pretty cool. What do you think, Joe? Looks good. I wonder what's inside. Maybe there's money in it. I hope it's full of money. Now, we have been working on some older jukeboxes and rebuilding so that's off of a ami jukebox that's the control amp power control is it the, i think they call it the control amp and then the other side is the power amp um but they've got tubes in them and so we don't have any way to check tubes so we need to get a tube tester now there are different grades of tube testers there's real cheap ones joe have you seen the ones that are like a little square and you put a tube in it and a light comes on are they from the china well, the problem. Well, now they are, but back in the day, they made just little ones. Those ain't no good. Okay. All they tell you is if the thing lights up, but it's useless for a tube. It would be like buying a thing to test a light bulb mm -hmm. by screwing the light bulb into it and seeing if the light bulb turns on. Completely useless. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might tell you if there's things shorted, but you can do that with a multimeter. So that that type's real cheap. Ain't worth the crap. Okay. Okay. And then there's a high-end type way over here that's like, it can do everything. Uh -huh. It can tell you how many minutes the thing has left on it. Not really, but... So it can tell if the emissions are right. It can check every little thing on the tube if everything is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can use it to match ones that are biased similarly, I believe is how they say it. And all of this, but they're real expensive. They're like $1,000. Oh, oh, my God. You think this I should... This is the big one. Should I order this one? No, no way. So we only work on ju uh, tube equipment about once or twice a year, right? But we might work on it more once we uh, get a little better with it. Well, one of the problems that we have is we don't have any way to test the tubes. So this is a mid-grade tube tester. So it can test for shorts and stuff like that. And it can test uh leakage and things like that but nothing serious so it's you got your low end this is better than that and then you got your high end it's not as good as that it's mid-grade and out of the mid-grade ones i think it's kind of like a little better than the cheap ones so that's my that's my opinion so let's see what she looks like now this is vintage stuff this is old school uh, the top comes right off very cool it's in good shape joe put that somewhere where we won't lose it They've kept it all these years. Now, Joe, don't lose it again. Look, that holds the paperwork, I bet. Uh-huh. Cool. All right. So this is a Mercury Model 301 combination tester. Okay. And they call it a combo tester because it can actually test uh, CRTs, and um, it's also like a voltmeter. But we don't really need a voltmeter. I got a bunch of them. So I got a, a, a multimeter. I've got a... Um, Somebody just mailed me one the other day, actually. Got one of these bad boys now. I got a bunch of flukes. So I don't really need the volt ohm meter part. Unless there's something I don't understand. I may maybe maybe we do need it, Joe, and we just don't know. Probably. Okay, so it's got that. But we probably won't use it much. Um still has the original probes, it looks like. It came with it back in the day to use it as a voltmeter. That's pretty cool. And then it still has the CRT cable too. So this plugs in here. And so you can check CRTs. Now I've got several rejuvenators. I've got about six of them. Um, the thing with one of these is 
this works on really old CRTs. So if you've got an old black and white TV, this will work pretty good. But on the little bit newer stuff, and you know the stuff that was made up into the 90s, you have to have a, an adapter for it. And I don't have the adapter. You could make one though. Um, and you can see you can test the uh, color guns separately. But again, it's for more like the earlier ones. I don't know when this thing was made. I would guess early 60s. Maybe 1960, something like that. Um, and then here's the power cord. And we also have a little clip here um, that is probably also used for the CRT. Okay, and then the middle part is the uh, what we need to test our tubes with. So we're going to see if we can get this sucker to work. Now, this thing is so old school that we kind of need to work on it first before we even use it <laughs> um, because it's got old caps in it. So I'm going to take the, 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 um, I'm going to take it out of the case so we can look behind it. And, uh, there's a, I looked on the schematics before it even got here. There's a few little caps that we may need to replace. Um, just because it's vintage equipment, you have to worry about stuff like that. So let me take the screws out and we'll, uh, we'll pop the plate off. All right, so we took the screws out and popped it over. Now we're not plugged in. I'm trying not to kill myself. It says that whenever you turn it from um, voltmeter to tubes to CRT, all of that's independent. So we don't really need to rebuild the stuff that works for the CRT, just the CRT, but who knows. There's an old school battery in it and another old school battery in it because it's... Uh, in the manual, it says that the voltmeter can be used without it being plugged into the wall, which I would have guessed that's what those are for. Um, and then the, the sockets that the tubes plug into are all just daisy-chained together. Um, and so, according to the schematics, there's only about five capacitors in this thing. So, um, we've got one here. That's a one microfarad capacitor, 400 volt. We've got a... Um, 0.05 microfarad, 600 volt, um, a 0.1, another 0.05, and another point, or an, a 0 0.01, um, and that's like it, if you look in the schematics. Now, we might have burnt up resistors, or burnt up diodes, or whatever, but the capacitors are old enough that they probably definitely need to be changed. So I'm going to swap them. I actually ordered some ahead of time by looking in the uh, schematics online. Six-volt battery. It'd be interesting to see if either one of those still have a charge. There ain't no way. There's no way. Um, maybe we could look in the schematics and see what that even goes to. But There's also a light bulb here that's going to be used to light up the short maybe or something like that if something's shorted and another one here so all in all pretty cool be interesting to see if it does anything okay so i'm going to swap some capacitors and then we'll move on from there well folks i took the one out and then we broke out our capacitance meter and the thing was almost dead on the money. It's 950 nanofarads. Um, and that's a pretty nice freaking cap. And then <laughs> we're talking and we're like, man, that might be nicer than the ones we're putting in. Uh, so it's in spec. Took one leg of this one loose just to check. And it's in spec. Look, look at the quality of that cap. Even though it's 60 years old. Okay. Check this one in circuit. Here, I'll have Joe do it. Joe, that's a 0.1 microfarad. Hold it to both legs. Hundred to one nanofarads. People, you can't get much better than that. I mean, it's dead on the money. That's a one percent cap. And this one, which is just on a light bulb, by the way, is fine as well. And this one is fine as well. You, we could even test them in circuit. So, thumbs up to our capacitance meter. And the caps. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Now, I'd already swapped the one, so I guess we'll leave it out. 
What do you think? Think maybe I should put it back in? You might want to put it back in there. The hell, I'm going to put it back in. Why not? If it's, I mean, it's a good cap and it's the original one. They've been working together all these years. Now you're trying to separate them. You know, he's got a good point, people. He's, he, really, he's got... People, come on now. He's got a good point now, if you think about it, really. Okay, I'm going to put it back. Okay, folks, so here's the schematics in the manual. You can see how all of the tube sockets are just kind of daisy-chained together, like we were talking about. And if you go down here and see this switch, it's off CRT tube or the voltage meter. You can see the voltage meter is down this way. And there's battery two, and there's battery one. So they are used for the voltage meter. Now, I don't know if that will work on AC power or not. You may have to have the batteries in to get the voltmeter to work. I don't know. But whatever. Okay. Let's show you some more. Oh, and one of the batteries is dead. The other one has almost one volt in it. It's supposed to be six volt. There's a warranty card. We're going to fill this out and send it in. Mercury Electronics Corp. in Mineola, New York. This is back when they actually built anything in the United States. Now they build like uh, just a couple things in the United States. Okay. And then this... Must have been hanging on it when they bought it, wherever they bought it. Three instruments in one. It was $110 in 1960. So I, man, I think that might be like $1,000 now. I don't know. You said you weren't going to get the $1,000 one. Well, I got it. I just had to get an old one. Oh. One, it's a tube tester. Test dynamic cathode emission, inter-element leakage, and gas content of all tube types, including Novars, New Vistas, Compactrons, etc. Now, as I understand... Novars, New Vistas, and Compactrons didn't really get used in hardly anything. It was kind of like, didn't happen. To a CRT, CRT tester rejuvenator, reactivator, tests, repairs, and reactivates all black and white and all color picture tubes. Three, a VOM, 20,000 ohms per volt, six DC voltage ranges, six AC voltage ranges, three ohms ranges, five DC current ranges, two capacity ranges. A complete portable service shop. Joe, we're in the money now. This is a little thing that tells you the procedure to test the CRT. It's basically telling you that how that cable works. But we're not going to use it for CRTs. Because we, uh, we have other ones. A very weak picture tube may have its life extended by use of a CRT brightener. Which is an extra thing you put on it. Mercury offers you more for your test equipment dollar. Technician approved for performance, quality, and value. Model 1101 tube tester. A dual purpose tube tester. Look, it's a self-service tube tester. Signal generator. True dynamic mutual conductance tube tester at an amazing low price. I got that stuff. That's pretty cool. I've actually seen a copy of this online. I think that's already scanned because I was looking at the schematics. Oh, by the way, on the capacitors, the reason that I uh, going the wrong way. The reason that I ordered the capacitors is because we didn't have it in yet, and I was placing an order for capacitors for the amp. So I just went ahead and ordered the five caps that the schematics had listed for this, but I didn't realize, I didn't know what kind of caps they were. They, they might have got here and been wax ones that were, you needed, needed to replace, but. Tube is good if it reads past the diodes okay line on the meter. Tubes with multiple listings have separate sections which must be tested individually. So this is, uh, you know, basically telling you how to set all of your settings. And then there's a supplement, which would have been just newer tubes or other stuff that they wanted you to be able to test. And then there's a few little notices. If this instrument is returned to the factory at any time, it must be packed and shipped in the original carton with the inserts as received. We will not be responsible for any shipping damage unless the instrument is packed as specified. 
Before attempting to remove panel, be sure to remove the two screws on the underside of the case. Unless these screws are removed, it will be impossible to remove the panel. Where the, well, where there's a will, there's a way, Joe. We probably could have done it without it. When replacing panel, be sure to replace the two screws on the underside of the case. If the screws are not replaced, the instrument could be badly damaged in shipment or shock. In the event this instrument is returned for repair without the panel properly secured, Mercury will not be responsible for damage or breakage. Revision. The picture tube test cable included with this instrument is the new model MH2. That's why it had that other little paper. Picture tube test procedure is exactly as given in this instruction manual except for the following. It applies only to black and white tubes. So basically you're so that it can test color ones. You got a new cable and they're telling you if you just want to do a black and white one again, just set it to red. Okay, so I'm going to, yeah, we put the cap back. So I'm going to put it back down, and then we'll uh, plug it up and see if anything burns up. Now, we could have resistors out and stuff, too, but everything looks good. Even the caps are still good, so who knows. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it back over, and we'll try it out. All right, folks, we got it all back together. By the way, I sprayed contact cleaner in all of the knobs from the bottom, and then worked them. So we got a button. We've got a momentary switch here. Uh, we've got some selectors and then we got a whole bunch of knobs. Okay, so we are off and we got it plugged in. So I'm going to turn it on and see if we get electroshocked. It's on the CRT tester and the light is on. The meter is not doing anything because we don't have anything hooked up. Okay, now we're on tube. Same thing. Okay. Now we're on volt ohm meter. Same thing. Okay. So I think what I want to do is spray some cleaner in the sockets too, and then we're uh, we're ready to test one and see what we can get it to do, if anything. All right, folks. So we've cleaned the sockets just with some contact cleaner. Okay, now we're going to try some test some tubes. What do you think? The six and a half inch meter is common to all circuits of the Model 301. See illustration of the various scales above. The wide three color scale is used when testing tubes. The narrow three color scale is used for picture tubes, tester, reactivator, and the numerical scales marked AC, DC, ohms, capacitance, microfarad are used by the uh, volt ohm meter. Okay, so way at the top we've got ohms, we're going to disregard that. Then we've got AC voltage, we're going to disregard that. And then it says receiving tubes. There's a bad and a good, and then there's a, what does that say in the middle? Weak. There's a weak in the middle there. And then down below it says CRT. So this is all labeled really well, you know. I looked at this online a little bit before I bought it and, and uh, thought it would be good for our purposes. We may get a better one down the road, but for what we're doing, this will be a good little start, get us kind of into it a little bit. Okay. Um, and then the capacitance meter down at the bottom. Okay. The tube tester section is activated when the main switch is at the position labeled tube. Okay. So, yeah, let me, let me read this part just so you know what's going on. Dials located S and T or switches which place heater connections on any desired socket pin. So since each tube has different connections for everything, they've got basically all of these switches, what they do is they just change what's connected to each pin on every socket, you know, since they're all daisy chained together. So S and T are the heater connections. The eight long life sockets accommodate all popular tube bases, including seven and nine pin, new Vister, 10 pin, Compactron, and Novar types. Special reg regular switch. This slide switch is always left in the regular lower position unless the symbol S appears in the column W of the tube chart, in which case the switches move up to the special position. So that's probably going to be used for some of those weird ones. Rotary switch is X, Y, and Z. Switch X is a 12 position switch that connects the proper pin element to the meter. Switch Z is a 12 position switch that connects the proper pin element to the return circuit. Switch Y is a nine position heater voltage switch. So Y is basically going to change what voltage the tube, the tube is working at. X connects it to the meter 
and Z uh, connects it to the return circuit, which I guess would be a ground. Switch W. This switch has four positions which provide the proper limiting resistance for the quality test. So basically that's got resistors wired into it uh, to change the resistance to the meter so that the meter can properly read it. Press for quality switch. This is a spring return slide switch normally in the upper position for shorts test. It is used only to get quality readings on the meter. Shorts grid leakage indicator. This clear view neon indicator shows a short or leakage of any type between any two pins of a tube. It is sensitive to two mega ohms. Pin straighteners are provided for miniature seven pin and nine pin tubes. So you can just stick the tube in there. It's not hooked to anything. It's just to straighten the pins out if you've got bent uh, pins. Okay. Uh, bu 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 test procedures. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Receiving tubes. Preliminary. Be sure to set controls before inserting the tube in its socket. In this way, damage will be avoided due to the due to excessive heater voltage being applied to the tube. So if you know if it runs on 20 volts or what I don't know what they run on. But instead, you've got it set for 100 and you go ahead and put it in there and then change the knob. No pro big problems. Check for shorts and leakage before testing for quality. Do not test the tube for quality if the shorts or grid leakage indicator glows when the tube is inserted in its socket or else damage to the tube or tube tester circuitry may result. So in other words, if the thing's shorted, it will immediately show up. That will light up. If it's shorted, you're done. Throw the thing in the trash. If you test it for quality, since it's shorted, you're going to send voltages where they don't need to go and screw something up. Shorts and leakage test. Plug in the power cord and set the main switch to position labeled tube. Power indicator jewel should go. Now notice they're telling you to do it hot. They're telling you to go ahead and turn the damn thing on. Right? So that's what we're doing. I'm doing it by the book, people. Here, people. People, I've got the book. Why would I not do it by the People, I gotta do it by the book. I've got the book. Come on now. You think I people I didn't invent this. Following the instructions. Look up the tube listing on tube chart and set switches S, T, X, Y, Z, and W as directed. Well, let's do that. Okay, so let's pull our first tube. We have a 12AX7, a very common tube, I believe. I've seen those in a bunch of stuff we've messed with. 12AX7, Joe, you know the settings for that one off the top of your head? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B. No, Joey, that's not, that's not the right settings. Oh. That's for, con come on, Joe. It's for Contra. Okay. <clears throat> so 12AX7 is right there. See it? So 4, 5, 8. So 4 is S, 5 is T, X is 8. What did I say, Joe? One of them was 7, wasn't it? I heard an X and a 9. Okay. Okay, so 4... On S. Five on T. And eight on X, I believe I said. Boy, I hope those knobs are on there, right? I hope so, too. Boy, if them knobs are off, we are in trouble. Okay, four, five, eight. Eight is X. Okay. Y is X. F, Z is 7. F and 7, Joey. F, 7. Okay. 12, A, X, 7. Uh, and then W is A. So since W doesn't say special, we leave this in regular. And this thing, the spring's a little touchy, so I'm going to leave it up. Okay. Disregard shorts lamp glow that may occur as above switches are rotated. When switches are set at positions listed in tube chart, shorts lamp will not glow. Okay, I'm, I, you know, I'd like to know if that... Yep, okay, good. I wanted to know if the damn lamp works, because if that bulbs burn out, you could have shorts all over the place. But guess what, folks? The bulb ain't burn out. So, by the way, if you're not keeping, keeping score... 1960, and we didn't have to do nothing to it. We replaced the cap we didn't need to and put it back. We cleaned it a little bit. 
Let's see if she'll work. The slide switch mark special or reg regular should always remain at the regular lower position unless the symbol S appears in column W of your tube chart. Where S appears, use the special upper portion of this switch. We're on regular. Plug the tube into the proper socket and allow 10 seconds for warm-up. Here we go. Are you ready, Joe? I'm ready. Now, it may burn me up. I'm going to put it in the straightener first. Boy, that's straight. They're telling me to hot swap it. I don't, I don't know about hot swapping it, but that's what they say. And then allow 10 seconds. Let's see if we get any kind of filament glow. I can't turn the lights off because I've got the... Uh, I've got it plugged into the lamp socket. Oh, I see a little glow down in there. It's up at the top. She's glowing. Just barely. But you know, some of them glow more than others. She's glowing, folks. Okay. Observe the neon indicator. Any steady glow shows that there is a short or leakage between the cathode and the heater or between cathode and grid. There's no steady glow, people. Come on, people. Come on now. There's no steady glow on it. Don't give me that. If tube showed a short in preceding test, do not test for quality or damage the tube or tester might result. The tube is bad and should be replaced. Okay. If tube shows no shorts, press the quality test slide switch and read tube quality on the meter. Okay, so we're going to press this switch. Oh! Well, guess what? It's bad. Boy, it's borderline, but it's bad. So, according to the tester, that's not a good tube. Now, remember, it's an old tube, so that's probably right. Okay, so that one, probably not good enough to use. Now, that's a good thing, because now we know one of the things that was wrong with our amplifier. Yep. Tube was about half worn out. Or maybe you might even say all the way worn out. Okay, so here's another one. Exact same tube. We'll try it. Put it in the straightener. I've already got it set. Put it in there. Should we put it in a different... Let's put it in on a different power cord, Joe. Plug that into something else. So we can turn the light out and so we can see if there's any glow. All right. Go ahead and hit the lights, Joe. Let's see if we get a glow on it. So you can see, although it's faint on that particular tube, she is glowing. Okay. All right, Joe, turn our lights back on. Um, no short. Mm-hmm. So that one's good, but... Eh, what do you think, Joe? Could be better. Could be better, Joey says. That's a good one, but could be better. Now, would the would the uh, amp run with those in it? I don't know. Probably. So that one could be better. Okay, uh, I think that's all of that model I've got. Let's see what's next on our list here. This is an ECC81. Make sure I got that right. Yes, ECC81, people. Let's look that up. From what I understand, that's more of like a, uh, a British numbering system. They call them something different in the United States. And the reason I know that is because if you look on the thing, they put two... I put two numbers. Okay, ECC81 is 4 and 5 again. 4 and 5, so it's the same. 8 and F. 8 and F. Yep, look, they're, they do them in order. And then 2. ECC81. Z should be 2. Am I right? No, I'm wrong. Z should be 7. Oh, there's two of them. I see. Oh, you know what? On the 12AX7, I didn't. I didn't check the other part of it. We got to go back. 
Okay, ECC 81, four, five, three. We're getting it messed up, Joey. Four, five, three. I forgot to test the other half of the 12AX7s. Four, five, three, F, two. ECC 81453F2A. Okay. It says give it 10 seconds to warm up. Boy, she's warmed up. No short. It's in the weak area. Very borderline. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that off while I change this one setting or these two settings. Four, five, eight. I guess really it um, since that one we already know is weak. There's really not much use to check the other part of it, but we'll see. F seven. And it, it specifically says in there that all of this is isolated. So when I'm on CRT, tube is completely turned off. So I'm basically still off. So you don't have to worry about voltage from this jumping over as you turn the knob. So short. Yeah, so that one's not really doing all that great. Okay. Let's go back to that second 12AX7 that we didn't test the other part of. Let's see here. So the next part was 453F. 45. 3F, 12A, X7, 453F, 2A. 2A. All right, so this is testing basically the second side of the 12A, X7. Basically, when these came out, they only had four pins, and they were basically diodes. And then they figured out that you could put more pins in it and use the same element, so you don't really have to make an, a... You don't have to use two tubes. You can have extra pins on it uh, and do extra things with it. So they have a couple distinct sides. Right? So this is the one that checked good earlier. We're now on the second half of it. So what is that? That could be there's a short. Or that could be I've got something set wrong. So let's check it one more time. I think what's probably going on is I've got the wrong tube in there. Nope, it's a 12AX7. So let's see what I've got wrong. It should be 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Um, it should be 3 and F. 3 and F. And it should be 2 and A. Okay. So we'll let it come up. So that one's got a short in it. So a short in it would definitely make the amp not work right. So that one's bad too. Now that's the one that the other half was fine. So we're not doing too good on these tubes so far yet, people. We got two left here though. On this part of it at least. So this is a 6A I can even tell. 
One of the problems with these old ones is that the label wears off. It's a 6AW8A. Okay. So, 6AW8451. 451. 6AW8451. E2A. E2A. Put it on a straightener. What do you think, Joe? Looks good to me. Some glow up at the top. We are not getting a short. That's more like it. So that's a decent little tube. I'll try it again. Yep, seems to be working all right. But there's two sides to this one. Six AW eight four five one E two. So I got to change it to four five six E seven. Do that with it on six E seven. All right, let it warm up a little bit. So, this is basically checking the second side of it. short also good that's a good tube according to this tester what do you think Joe I think it's real good yep. boy like that's that. a real good tube bear <laughs> you like that one yep. maybe we just put all of those in mm -hmm. so this is the same tube The second half of the tube because I didn't change anything. Getting some neck glow. They said give it 10 seconds. There's no shorts, Joey. Yeah, buddy, that's a good one too. That's the best one so far. Pretty good. Well, you kind of want them to be, I think, similar. Like, if you got a matching pair, you kind of want them to both kind of be about the same. But, 451E. So, 451E. 2A. 2A. All right. Let it warm up a little bit. leaking all right and the second side of that one's good too all right so that's a good uh that's a good little tube there as well cool and every one of them so far of the five has used this same socket so you can see that socket would wear out after a while <laughs> we might have to get a little adapter or something to sit in it hmm <laughs> great all right well that's that. I need to. So I'm gonna make a list of the ones that we need to order, and then um, also um, um, we'll have to uh, see if we've already got some of them. I've got hundreds of tubes with no tube tester, but now we got a tube tester. So this one's telling me some of them are good and some of them are bad. I don't know. Kind of sounds like it's working, Joe. What do you think? I think it's working perfect. Perfect. All right, so we got some uh, some other ones to test, and then we'll uh, we'll see what comes out. It'd be kind of cool to get our hands on a new one, and then see if the new one tests really good. All right, folks. Now this one's an interesting one. It's a five U four GB, big old tube, old more old school, and you can see that it has 
five pins so that's going to be two for the filament and then this is probably like a diode one with like maybe two anode or cathode or whatever different socket 5u4284 284 D8A D8A it's on everything and it's on okay yeah it's on regular I've been turning it off on some of them I just don't want to fry anything so let's see if there's any kind of short or if we even get any kind of glow. Some of these are deceptive. They don't glow hardly at all, but that doesn't really mean that there's anything wrong. And some of them glow real bright, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good. It is glowing, but just barely. Old school. Okay, no shorts. Now, oh, um, 5U4, it has a star beside it, which means that it's a diode. So we don't need it to go up to here. We want it to go past where it says diode tubes okay. So if it gets to there, we're good. Still kicking ass after all these years. <laughs> whoever, whoever built that one, good job, people. Now let's see if the other side of it works. 286D8. So the only difference is that one pin. So if you remember, it said this is the one that connects to the meter. So these are the two heaters. This connects to the meter. That's the voltage. And that connects to the, like, the, the, the common. Or when it, did it say common? It said, uh, return. Okay. So, so there's only one, one pin that changed because the, basically the input is the same and then there's two pins that are outputs. We tested one connected to the meter and it was fine. So now we're testing the other one connected to the meter. No shorts. Ah, so good. So that big old tube, even though the, the filament isn't glowing all that strongly, works just fine. Interesting. All right, on to the next one. All right, now we're on to the power amp, and there are these four 7868s. Um, so it uses a different socket. And it has a screen in it, a G2. All right? So, and all of this is, there's different things that it mentions whenever you get to that uh, 2 in the chart. It says... Screen, G2 short test. The cathode to control grid and cathode to heater test performed in the above procedure will detect over 95% of all shorts found in tubes. Okay. For those tubes which have a screen grid, such as tetrodes and pentodes, you can check for a short between control grid and screen grid, G1 to G2, as follows. Refer to the tube chart column labeled G2 short. Now... G2 short. Most of them don't have anything listed. But on this particular one, it does. It says X1. Move the designated, move the designated switch, either X or Z, to the position given in that column. So you move X to 1. So basically what they're doing is, now remember, this is the one that connects to the meter. So you just moved it around to that, right? Any steady glow in the shorts indicator means G1 is shorted to G2 and the tube should be replaced. So there is no steady glow. It says, uh, so we're, we're checking for um, shorts between the control grid and the screen grid. It says, any short not involving the cathode may be found after the quality test. Cathode shorts can damage the instrument during quality tests, so they are absolutely automatically found before the quality test. So basically they've just constructed it so that if the if those 
the cathode shorts, it just automatically finds whenever you've got these set the way they want you to set it in the manual. And then uh, you can do the quality check after that. And then only after all of that, if both of those tests pass, then you can check for the screen to control grid sh short. Okay, so you got to do it in order. Screen shorts are quite rare. There are other types of shorts that are so rare that a test for them is ordinarily not important unless a shorted condition is suspected. The Model 301 can find any shorts between two pins of a tube. The method for locating other shorts is, a, is described on pin 12 of the appendix under the heading Additional Shorts Test Procedure. By using switches X and Z, a short between any two elements in a tube can be found as follows. Use base diagram of tube as given in popular handbooks, available free at or at nominal cost from any tube jobber. <laughs> Sets, there's a word you don't see too often anymore, jobber. Set switch X to the number corresponding to one of the base pins to be tested. Set switch Z to the number corresponding to the other base pin to be tested. Observe the short grid leakage indicator. If glow occurs, there's a shorter leakage between the two base pins being, being tested. Right? Note, shorts between cathode and heater or cathode and control grid have already been tested in the regular test procedure, so do not make any other tests for shorts involving the heater or the cathode. What? Now look at this. If you press the quality switch when the indicator shows a short, you may damage the meter or rectifier in the tube tester as a result of excessive current, current flows. If switches X and Z or X and T are left at the same setting, the shorts jewel will glow. Glow will disappear if switch S is moved to the same position as switch X. This effect can be disregarded since no tube will be tested with switches at these settings. As long as the quality switch is not pressed, a short indication will do no damage. Okay, so what they're saying is you can turn this around however you want, and as long as you don't press that quality button, you're not juicing it, <laughs> and it won't fry it. So what that means is whenever you're going between and testing the, uh, the two sides of a tube, you know, if it's got two, two settings, you don't have to turn it off. You can just change them and then hit the, look for the short, and then hit the quality check. So as long as you don't hit that while you're on the wrong settings, you won't fry anything. So if I got to go from seven to two, you know, if I turn it, it's going to lit up, light up until I get to wherever I'm supposed to go, whatever the setting is for this one. And so while I'm changing the settings, some of those are going to be shorted because I'm on the wrong setting. But as long as I don't actually hit that while it's on the wrong setting, everything's cool. So I don't know. I think it's a cool little tester. It's not a top model, top of the line one like I was talking about, but it's seems to be pretty good. And it's the quality seems pretty good. I mean, you saw those caps are right in spec. It's 60 years old, so I think they used de decent stuff to construct it, and it's kind of stood the test of time. So I'm gonna finish up the uh, the last of my tubes, and then we'll uh, we'll see what's next. Okay, folks. So years ago, I bought hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tubes off of a guy, and then I think somebody gave me a whole bunch more because they know that I like all this old stuff. So I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of them. And I've been trying to organize them for years. But I got this particular box off of a guy that apparently, uh, you know, worked on them back in the day. And what he would do was he would, you know, he'd throw out the bad ones. But he, he would always have ones around that he had saved that uh, tested good. So, you know, some of them are really old. And there's just all kinds of different types. So I've been looking through this box. Now, what I've been doing is going through and kind of putting them, sorting them into boxes by their uh, numbers, you know, and then I've made a big master list. So, I had on my list that somewhere I had a 12AT7, which is a real common one, uh, but is one of the ones that tested bad on our, uh, on our meter on that uh, control amplifier. So, one of the ones we need is a 12AT7, and apparently I've got it in a box here somewhere. I'm going to go find it. I have found it. Old school Sylvania 12AT7. Put it in. No leaks. 
<laughs> the old timer saved me some money, whoever it was that saved this all those years. He may have took that out of something in 1971, and here I am in 2022, and I'm finally going to use it, buddy. We're putting it in a jukebox. Woo! So as you could hear, we got her up and running. Our little tube tester is really going to help us out. So that's good. We've been cleaning on it a little bit. I think it came out pretty nice. Put some nice new title strips in it, unfortunately. You can't get the full effect because it's daytime, but you get the general gist. Such a cool one. All right, so I'll do one more little video showing it playing one of these songs. If I do this, if I do it as part of this uh, video, though, eBay will uh, demonetize us. We can't do that, folks. It has to be a separate video. So I'll upload it just immediately after this one. If you've seen this video, it's already uploaded because I waited five minutes and then uploaded it. So go check it out. It's on our channel just after this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This is a 1964 Tropicana love our little tube tester i think it's going to work just fine it sure got this thing sounding fine along with the cap kit but i think those three uh bad tubes were the whole problem i i if i didn't i think i mentioned it earlier but if i didn't mention it we have a whole bunch of tubes in the back in a box hundreds of them and so i was able to find those three tubes in that box test them they were fine put them in the amp and it works and sounds great so there you go, folks. All right, so get, leave your comments down below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. If you want to know how you can help our channel out, down below there's a link to Amazon. If, you, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon already, click our link before you do it, and it gives us a tip uh, because we sent you there. Okay? So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. You can also check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com where we have prices, pictures, and descriptions of everything we've got available for sale at the moment. And uh, we also have a parts page on there. Uh, with some of the parts and things that we use on our repairs and our t-shirts and all that kind of stuff so go check it out and uh last but not least don't forget to check out my brother donnie literally my brother has his own channel here on youtube we work on old jukeboxes coin operated equipment and he works on old vehicles things like that so go check it out i'm over there with him if uh if you enjoy our channel you'd enjoy his he's just a little bit crazier <laughs> we'll see you on the next video i hope you enjoyed it